Hey, Gibby. Uh, Garth Orgy here from Twitter. Uh, I was just wondering, uh, what was it like being teammates with Doc Gooden back in the mid '80s, and uh, like, just like, what was it like to be around him and, and Strawberry and Keith and, and Gary and all those great players, but specifically Doc Gooden because he was just so incredible in, in that '85 and '86 seasons. So, uh, yeah, thanks for answering. Well, you know what, uh, it, you know, Doc and I uh, b- both made the, the Mets opening day roster in 1984, right? When they called it, even had articles called the G-Men, Gooden and Gibbon, right? One guy had a much better playing career. You know, <laughs> after, after, I mean, then, you know, his life got turned upside down. The other guy, not much of a playing career, but got into coaching, right? Hey, there you go. And, uh, you know, I, I see Dwight every now and then when they, they'll have some kind of like reunion from the 86 match. You know, I was there for two months and, and, uh, and some car, uh, autograph cards shows, that kind of thing. One of the best guys you'll ever meet, you know, and, it, and it's really sad, you know, what what's ha- what happened to him. Because he, he he would give the shirt off your back. He would do anything you ever needed, right? But he came along. You know, Doc, I can remember him showing up in spring training, a young kid, you know, and he, he's got all this hype, right? He, he uh Anyway, and you could see you could just see there was some obviously he had to, he had a great arm, but there was just something about this guy confidence. It's like we we're talking about closers. He was confident in the uh, in a great athlete. He had everything going for him, right? It's kind of, but kind of interesting story. In uh, what was it eighty three? I was in Jackson, Mississippi, in Double A Texas League, and he was with the Lynchburg Mets team in the Carolina League, um, high A ball. In in uh, I think what happened is beginning of the year he was well maybe the first month or so he was he was just kind of sputtered you know not doing much in the in the, the story we got you know from you know anybody in the organization said he was at the point where they were going to send him down to low A ball because he I mean he wasn't doing much you know and so the pitching coach went out there I think it was John Cumberland a really good pitching coach went out there one time to the mound and 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 basically in the word I got is he told me it's time to shit or get off the pot, kid. Right? <laughs> and, 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 he, and you know what? And Doc just, whatever, I don't know if that's what did it. Or, I mean, it's, it's something clicked, right? And then he goes on, he strikes out 300 guys in A ball. I mean, in minor league season, it's like, and they check out, he, I don't know, did he win the 18 19 games? I don't know. Check out his 1983 season. In the, so, anyway, he, it was like, uh, and that's the story we got. You know, they, well, we, they might send him down, you know, because he's, and all of a sudden something set him off, right? So that, that year in 83, he got called up to triple A at the end of the year. And I was still in double A. And then back then they had a triple A AAA world series. It was a true triple A world series. You had the, you know, international league, which we were in and the American association, the Pacific coast league, three teams got together in Louisville, Kentucky and played around Robin for the, you know, so doc. So our, our triple A team in Tidewater, you know, won the, won the league. So they went there. So Doc was went up there with them, and then I had finished my season in Double A and went home for a week. And they called and said, you know, Mike Fitzgerald, who, who ended up playing getting traded to the Expos for Gary Carter back in '84, uh, I think it was. He uh, he got called to the big leagues. So they needed a catcher, so they uh, they called me there. They called me up, and uh, so that's when we first got together and, and we actually played together. And I got to catch him at ESPN covering the game. I think it might have been the championship game. Anyway. Uh, can you guys still see me on here? My phone? Yeah, you're all you. good. Uh, yeah, uh, it, it's my wife, and, and I'm not answering the phone. It's, it's clicking <laughs> on at that. And, uh, she's got, you know. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> That's some explaining to do. Right? <laughs> she's like, oh, he's probably talking baseball again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So anyway, that was kind of, you know. So then we both we go to spring training the next year, uh, in '84, and he he's 19. I was 21 at the time. And that you know the team had been bad, the Mets have been bad, but they had a lot of good prospects come along, right? So Davey Johnson, the manager, and he wants to give us both a shot. So we both make the team. And so I caught Doc a couple of times, and then I ended up getting injured and in, uh, getting sent back down eventually. But uh, that's how that's how I got. You know, uh, I guess my point of my story is this guy was a, a treat to catch, man. You know, I mean, he's just uh, a, a a young kid that just I mean. You know, it was one of those generational guys. The league hadn't seen one of those guys in a long time, right? So, and then, uh, but one of the best guys you will ever want to meet, you know. And then, but then, you know, I mean, uh, along with Strawberry, you know, they ran together, you know, in uh, um, New York, tough town, and especially when the team's good, you know. And they, in the, 
they both got caught up and they, they you know, made some bad choices and, mm -hmm. you know, it, you know, it, you know, it, it hurt them. Right. Obviously they both should have been going in the hall of fame, but, yep. um, and then eventually they both ended up playing with the Yankees and all that. But it, uh, you know, everybody think, you know, I think what everybody thinks for maybe what Doc Gooden's been through, he, he'd be kind of some bad, bad dude, blah, blah, whatever. Nicest guy you'd ever want to meet. He'd do something for you and anybody. You'd met. He's that kind of guy, you know? Um, and, 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 and it was cool. a thrill. I just, I just wish that when the G men they were talking about had come through and I got to catch them a few more times. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Didn't right. work. Doesn't, hey, life doesn't always flip. No, right? <laughs> it doesn't really always work. go the way you want. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. Only one of you has a podcast now, so it worked out all right. That's right. Hey, I'll, I'll, get, I'll get, I'll get him on there. No hey, there yes, you go. You that's should. Good Heck yeah. Good one. Yeah, for sure. 